In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him. And without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life. And the life was the light of all the people. And the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, and yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as our Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. Perhaps one of the things that is most universal in our experience as human beings is this sense of decay. We get old and things aren't renewed. Things begin to hurt. People suffer and they die. There is an entropy. There is a catastrophe at the heart of life. We hope, we want to live forever. We want to stay full of energy and full of health. And yet, there is this corruption in us all which brings age and then finally death. On the whole, most people don't like talking about it. Indeed, we use all kinds of euphemisms to avoid talking about death. But it isn't just, it isn't just physical aging. It's also moral decay. One of the strange things for me is how over the years, instead of the spiritual and the moral life getting easier, to my mind it's grown harder. Forgiveness gets harder the more blows you take. Faith can in some ways, perhaps not faith, but certainly trust, trust can in some ways grow harder the more often the ground has been taken under our feet. Love brings more wounds the more often it is rejected. It certainly doesn't get easier as we grow older. And there is, as Dylan Thomas described it, a dying of the light. And some people do rage against it. But in the face of this dying of the light, as Christians, we have to say to the world around us, we have discovered the secret of the renewal of life and the renewal of light. And it comes from the beginnings of time, beyond time and beyond space. We would, like Plato, imagine that the world has a coherence behind it, a, a rationality, but there are times when that rationality seems cruel, when creation preys upon itself, when there is a kind of inevitable logic that makes accidents happen, when children walk out in front of cars and get killed. There is a, there is a terrible logic of cause and effect in a dangerous world. And we might imagine, if we didn't know, if we hadn't been told, if we hadn't seen that reality was cruel and inevitable, it's certainly coherent. And if 
If it wasn't for Jesus, we might feel very vulnerable in this rational, causal, coherent universe where we find ourselves dying. But God chose to surprise us. He chose to find a way that was clothed in the language of love. And so he came vulnerably and secretly and gently and quietly and mysteriously. Because we are not ready to find him until we are hungry to know. And for as long as the people we live amongst try and shore up the existential difficulties of being human by entertaining and distracting themselves, by running after food and drink and all the constellations of the flesh. For as long as our community, our culture tries to fill up those spaces, so, so this mysterious gift of love will escape them. Only when people have tried everything on the whole are they ready to hear of the secret that is Jesus. And then we can tell them that into the middle of the darkness and the coldness at the dead time of year, when the world is most dead, when it has exhausted itself, when the darkness is longest and deepest, the light comes into the darkness. Life comes to a sleeping and dying world. We've been shocked into being ashamed of Jesus. We are frightened to tell people who long for life that life has come to them. We're frightened to tell people who are scared of the darkness of politics and of man's inhumanity to man that light is possible for the human heart. We have to find the courage of our convictions. And this Christmas is another opportunity to say, without God, without love, without forgiveness, people die, the world dies, the night triumphs. But with Jesus, in a way that has happened in no other place, at no other time, with no other religion, neither Buddha, nor Mohammed, nor the Hindu gods, nor the energies of the New Age, nor Gaia. Nothing else but Jesus comes to the human soul and offers purity and forgiveness. No one else will come after us to pick us up when we have fallen down, to heal us and carry us home. No one else will forgive us our sins 70 times 7. No one else can stand on the neck of death and break it so that we may be carried into heaven. Only, only Jesus has done this. We should be more courageous to bring the name of Jesus onto our lips through the influence of the malign spirit, Jesus is found on many lips, but always as a curse, as a blasphemy, as an exasperation, as a dirty word. And he should find his name on our lips as a word of love, as a word of peace, as a word of hope, as a word of light and life. The world is celebrating Christmas and doesn't know Jesus. It's celebrating Christmas and doesn't know the Christ. And good though it is to do social work, good though it is to feed the poor and to help the homeless and look after the hungry, all obligations of this compassion lays upon us. The most important thing is to flee eternal death to flee the suffocation of sins, to flee the darkness that casts a pall over the human heart. 
We have to find the confidence to tell people that Jesus is the answer to their guilt, to their despair, to their weakness, to their exhaustion, to their hopelessness. For his love come down in humanity and he will rescue anybody who stops exhausted and turns to him and says, help. Kyrie eleison. Lord have mercy. And as we face this new year, the turning of the earth, the coming of the light, we do it as companions of Jesus. For he has been born in our hearts. We take him into our hearts by faith, by love, through listening to his holy word, and through the most blessed and wonderful Eucharist. We encourage each other in this journey, for God has come into the world. He has come into the darkest place of all, the human heart, to bring life and light, to bring hope and forgiveness. And we offer him our praise day by day and our thanksgiving as we drive away the darkness and the hopelessness with songs of praise and songs of love, for these are now our calling. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen.